Paul wasn't at today's get together. Where was he? Is he sick? Working, as usual. Does he always work Saturdays? Sometimes, yeah. There was some minor emergency and he was needed on site. Hopefully he can make it the next time. As I suspected. What do you mean? What did you suspect? No rest for the poor, as they say. I guess it can't be helped. When you're poor, you need to work as much as possible to make ends meet. I read in a magazine the other day that some poor people work up to 20 hours a day, seven days a week, and they still can't afford to put their kids through school. I knew that was the case the minute I laid eyes on your husband. I said to myself, that man looks like he doesn't have a penny to his name. None of my business, though. I'll stay right out of it and keep my opinions to myself. That just now was keeping your opinions to yourself? Hmm. Sounded like you've already made up your mind about him and our family. I'm just saying. I'm a good judge of character. I took one look at him and thought at once that he was probably doing three or four jobs to put food on the table. You poor guys. If you ever need anything, cans of soup, the odd lasagna now and then, you just sing out, okay? We can't have you all starving to death because of pride. There's nothing wrong with asking for a little help from those more fortunate than you. I see. Thank you so much for your charity. He's nothing like my Oliver. I bet your husband doesn't have a single piece of clothing worth more than a few dollars. That's the impression you got? Interesting. Paul doesn't care about fancy clothes, or anything fancy for that matter. He never has. Clearly. <laughs> but don't judge him just because he's not interested in expensive clothes. Steve Jobs used to wear his scruffy jeans and his skivvy to product launch events, where everyone else was in suits. He didn't care either. Janet, it's okay to dream, but to compare Paul to Steve Jobs? That's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Don't you think it's just a bit forward to assume someone is dirt poor without knowing everything about them? Sorry. As I said, I'm an excellent judge of character. I only need one glance to sum someone up. That's just the way he looked. I'm sorry. I didn't think poor people had any feelings. What? Are you reading your own text? What you're saying is borderline hate speech. Please stop insulting me. What's wrong with calling poor people poor? Do they get offended? What if I call the horse a horse? I'd be right. The horse would think, yes, I'm a horse. You're right. Did you never hear the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? There's another saying that goes, appearance is nine tenths of the law. <laughs> Thank you. I'm beginning to understand where you're coming from. Please. Go on. Isn't it natural to look down on the poor? I mean, if they didn't want to be poor, they could stop it, right? I can't help feeling they're just being lazy. You're a housewife, right? Have you ever worked a day in your life? Me? Oh, good heavens, no. Ew. I don't think I'm suited to getting my hands dirty. I did have a job in a perfume shop for a week when I was in high school, but I had to quit. I couldn't stand touching the money. It's very dirty, you know. I read in a magazine that you can catch all sorts of diseases from touching money after other people have touched it. You should probably think about what you're saying a little more. Those kind of general statements can be really hurtful. My Oliver works for Prescott Chemicals, the biggest chemical producer in the state, one of the biggest in the whole country. And he's not actually making this stuff. Of course not. He's one of the top executives. We're so happy. Life is good. Don't you think it's better to have money for the children? I can't imagine growing up with poor parents. I shudder to think what their suffering must be like. My heart bleeds for them. Give it a rest, would you? You think I like hearing this? And really, you shouldn't judge people on their appearance. Your intuition isn't as good as you think. We're just fine with the status quo. Okay, okay. Have it. You're right. You put on such a brave face. But you can let your guard down with me. I admire you in a way. It's kind of admiration mixed with pity. 
but admiration too. Wow, you do go on, don't you? I can assure you, we are fine. Well, if you don't at least buy your kids nice clothes, they end up just like their appearance. They'll never break the cycle of poverty. Those poor kids. Leave us alone. I'm really busy today, so we don't have any more time to continue to get offensive texts from you. Okay? No rest for the poor, huh? Okay, bye. Montana, have you got a moment? Did you take my family's name off the list for the next gap together? Why did you do that? Oh, I didn't think you'd be able to make it. What? Well, you guys are struggling to get by. So I just assumed the fee we collect from each family would be a bit much for you guys. I didn't want you to have to break the bank to come. That money would probably be better off spent on the kids, wouldn't it? I thought I'd spare you the shame and embarrassment of having to tell the others the reason why you couldn't make it. And don't worry, your secret is safe with me. If anyone asked, I'll just say that one of your kids has the flu, something like that. You should be thanking me for looking out for you. I've got your back, Janet. And I mean what I say about you guys asking for help. We're always ready to lend a hand to the less blessed in our community. What are you talking about? Don't just go assuming things without even asking, okay? Our mothers have asked me why you would do such a thing. Well, I, um, I just don't like poor people. I want to help you realize that it doesn't have to be this way. I said we'd help you if you needed it. But it's more to help you realize the situation you're in and help push you into action. I don't like the poor. They bring me down every time I see them. By some miracle, you've managed to make your way into a group. I thought it was very odd, such a poor family being a part of our group, but it is what it is. And I'd like you to try and pull yourself up from the poverty you're in. It can't be very pleasant living like that. I'm not following you at all. You've imagined some poverty stricken family that you seem to have conflicting feelings about. All 100% of creation of your own mind based on nothing but seeing my husband wearing clothes that weren't designed by some famous Italian. You know nothing about my family. You just made up your mind about us based on nothing. And now you won't even keep me in the loop on school events? Taking me off the, of the list of participants? That's going too far. I've had enough of this, Montana. I will not tolerate the poor being a part of our circle. It's not right. Either you do something about your situation or you're not welcome. It depresses me seeing you and your bedraggled husband. Those poor, poor children. My heart breaks. It's best you don't come to any more meetings. People really don't want to rub shoulders with your type and they literally don't want to rub shoulders with your husband. Our designer clothes might get dirt on them. That's enough. You don't have a shred of common decency in you. All this acting like you want to help, and then the next text you send is a direct attack on my family and your preconceived notions of how we live our lives. I could say the same about you. You could? How so? You're dirt poor, and yet you think you have the right to join our group. That's not how it works, Janet. You're being very presumptuous to think we would welcome someone of your low status into our group. Some of the families in our circle are practically local royalty. Have you ever seen the kind of cars the children are dropped off in? I still have no idea how you managed to send your children to our school. It's a total mystery. Is there some kind of outreach program? A secret scholarship for the poor that I'm not aware of? That really is enough. Your lack of grace and compassion is mind-blowing. How did you become such a snob? Mind-blowing? I think you'll find my way of thinking is the majority. I have the support of all the other mothers in the group. You're the lone wolf. Need I remind you that my husband is an executive at one of the biggest companies in the state? I did tell you that, didn't I? 
Your husband's job has absolutely nothing to do with how you treat other people. I think you'll find it does. We're the elite of the city. We have the right to exclude those who don't live up to the high standards expected of members of our group. What does your husband's job have to do with you having no common sense or decency? I'm failing to see the connection. What right do you have to say anything? Your husband works part-time at a 7-Eleven, right? That's the way he looks. He's the vice president of the company your husband works for. He's your husband's direct superior. Oh, really? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh, Janet, that kills me. You really are in a terrible situation, aren't you? Poor and not all that right. I guess it's just a vicious cycle. The poor and the uneducated are doomed to be that way forever. It's just so sad. The poor have decided that that's the way the world works and they accept it. But don't you feel an obligation to do better for the children? It's not their fault they were born into a poor, stupid, and lazy family, is it? They are innocent. But I suppose poor parents raise children to be poor adults and it just continues. Endlessly. Do you ever stop harassing people? Who gave you the right to talk to people like that? I'll say it again. My husband is the vice president of Prescott Chemicals. He's your husband's boss. What? <laughs> yeah, right. It's a family business. The whole company and all of its subsidiaries are owned by Paul's family. Did you ever ask what my family name is? I've seen it written on school lists before, but I, it's a common enough name. There are two or three other Prescott families that are in the school, nothing out of the ordinary. And those families are rich. The kids are dropped off in McLaren's and Bugatti's. Those two or three families are all part of the same Prescott family. One of the fathers, Paul's cousin, is a board member and one of the mothers, Paul's older sister, is the CEO of the pharmaceutical branch. There are actually two more families you may have overlooked. Margaret Wake. Of course I know Margaret. She's been the head of the PTA for the last three years. She's Paul's little sister. She's also a board member. Karen Evans. The area school commissioner. Paul's cousin. She also owns 30% of the entire company. Oh, God. I knew your husband was working there. I just didn't say anything. Paul says he's a great executive and a generally nice guy. I didn't want to cause any problems between our husbands when they seem to have a genuinely good working relationship. No need to burden them with such trivial nonsense. But you've gone too far, Montana. Your prejudice has made you into a nasty, toxic person. You're lying. You aren't serious, are you? You're just making this up out of spite. Right? I'm not making up any of it. Until now, I didn't see the need to make this information public. But I won't be the target of your personal crusade against the poor. You seem to be bent on broadcasting your wealth and self-perceived elite status to anyone who will listen, while looking down on those less fortunate than you. And yet my husband has been your husband's boss all along. And you will have, of course, heard the name Hugh Prescott II. The president, yes, of course. Hmm, think about that for a moment. Is he Paul's father? You got it. You gotta be joking. This is just your last ditch attempt to salvage some dignity, right? I'm dead serious. I'm actually surprised you haven't heard all of this before from some of the other mothers. Most of them know about my family. Well, why am I the only one who didn't know? It's very amusing to watch, actually. Whenever you badmouth my husband and my family at meetings, 
The other mothers all stare awkwardly at the floor. At first, it was baffling as to why you didn't notice. But now I can clearly see that you're so stuck up and established that you are incapable of noticing anything that happens around you. It's like you're in a little bubble. All you can hear is your own voice. I didn't know. Why didn't anyone tell me? You only moved to the city last year, right? I guess you just didn't ask enough questions. Didn't care about others? You'll have to ask yourself that one. But you took one look at my husband and decided he was poor. Didn't care for the children. And we were doomed to live our lives in poverty. You badmouthed me and my family without knowing anything at all. I haven't ever told Paul about how degrading you've been to me and my family. But this time, I can't keep my mouth shut. I can't let you get away with this. No, no. Wait a minute, Janet. Don't do that. That's not a good idea. We don't need to get the husbands involved. We can sort this out. Just you and me. This can't have any effect on my husband. He hasn't done anything wrong. This is between you and me, right? Your husband has done nothing wrong. As I said, Paul and the rest of the board are very happy with him. He's an excellent worker. But I'm going to tell Paul about this. It's all here in your texts. And don't try to delete any of them. I've already taken screenshots of this entire conversation. I'm sorry. Please don't tell your husband. It'll open up a whole can of worms. Please, let's just talk about it. You and me. What do you say, Janet? Can a girl get a second chance? But it isn't just me, is it? There are other mothers who avoid you at all costs. What other things have you done to make people stay out of your way? People avoid me? Absolutely. And you haven't even noticed? Most other mothers don't want to be in the same room as you. You're living in a dream world where you can only hear your own voice. Nobody wants to be anywhere near you. Have you really not noticed that people say as little as possible? That everyone has an excuse to leave when they have to talk to you? I did think that the children in this town do get fever more than other places. Why do people avoid me? I'm nice to everyone. I'm always organizing school events. I thought I was popular. I'm wealthy. Dress well. What's not to like? Just being rich doesn't automatically make you popular. Why would you think that? Most of the families that have children that are in school are wealthy. It's a level playing field. And yet you seem to think you're at the top. What makes you think you're better than everyone else? Or is it some insecurity that makes you want to assert dominance over those less fortunate? You thought my family was poor, so you focused all your attention on me. Did it make you feel better to be so patronizing? I... Um... Oh, and Montana? Just one more thing before I let you go. What else could there be? I know you've been seeing the third grade teacher, Mr. McCarthy. What? What are you talking about? There are witnesses. And photos. That's an outright lie. Oh, really? They've been shared amongst the mother's group. Everyone's seen them. There's no doubt it's you. Some of them are very damning for a married mother. They could be extremely problematic should they fall into the wrong hands. If someone should, oh, I don't know, forward them to your husband? Everyone has seen them. Yep, every single mother in the third grade. So, should someone with a grudge against you choose to get a little revenge, well, it would be very easy, wouldn't it? I'm not saying I do such a thing, but who's to say another mother wouldn't do it? You aren't very popular, so I wouldn't count on everyone keeping quiet. I'd be very worried if I were you. 
There is plenty of evidence. I'm thinking I should go and have a talk with the principal. What do you think? No, don't do that. This can't be happening. You're trying to trick me, right? This is an elaborate plot to get back at me for looking down on you and your family. Right? Jenny! I couldn't dream up such a trivial storyline if I tried. I'm afraid it's all 100% true. Karma, Montana. The world has an uncanny way of delivering payback. But it's simple, really. It's just a natural reaction to how horrible you were. If you hadn't treated people so badly, people wouldn't hate you. Simple. Easy to understand. Wait. I haven't been having an affair. And I had no idea about your husband and his family. I'm sorry. I apologize. Forgive me. You don't have to tell your husband. Please don't do it. I don't think I needed to. I didn't want to bother either of them. But... You went too far. You insulted my husband and children. I can't let that go. My husband will be contacting you. You can apologize to him directly. I will. Just please don't tell Oliver. If he finds out about Mr. McCarthy, I'll be in a world of trouble. Please promise me you won't say anything. Janet, can you promise me? I can't make any promises. What happened between you and the third grade teacher is my business. If that comes out, so be it. But it won't be coming from me. But everyone knows about it. If it comes out, you'll have to deal with that yourself. I couldn't stop it if I tried. I will say there have been strong words posted in the group chat about a teacher who does such a thing. More than a few mothers have started to doubt whether they can trust a teacher who hasn't been fair with a married member of the PTA. Personally, I think it probably should become public knowledge. The school has a reputation to uphold and can't just brush this sort of thing under the rug and pretend it never happened. Aren't you embarrassed about what you've done? Yes, of course. I let lust get in the way of my family. I'm so sorry. I apologize, Janet. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry for what I said about you to your husband and children. I'm sorry for seeing Mr. McCarthy. I'll never meet him again outside of school. Can't you just help me out this once? Talk to the other mothers. Make sure my husband never hears about this. Please. It isn't for me to decide what happens. It's your bed. Now you've got to sleep in it. I'm not going to cover it for you. Don't say it like that. I don't know what to do. I'm finished. I thought we were friends. Friends? You aren't serious, are you? With the condescending way you've treated my family? You really can't hear anything but your own voice, can you? One glance at my husband, and you immediately thought he worked at a convenience store. And what if he did? Why does it matter so much to you what people do, or how they live? It just so happens that the day you saw him, he'd just gotten back from a team-building survival camp that Prescott runs every year for its employees. That t-shirt with the holes in it even had Team Building 2012 written on it. Paul has been leading the camp for the last decade. Your husband was in that camp. But you didn't even think to put two and two together. As I said, you're in a dream world. Your self-centeredness is at the heart of this. You also tried to kick me out of the mother's group. Have you forgotten that? Friends? <laughs> Why on earth would I consider you a friend? Sorry, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I was trying to help you. Remember they were all lasagna? I was only joking with you. 
I didn't really mean all those things I said. Just a bit of teasing between friends. It's too late. The other mothers have all said they're blocking you and won't take your calls. Block me? Nobody wants to have anything to do with you. All you do is trash talk people. You never have a nice thing to say unless you're talking about how much money your husband makes. Everyone in the group is wealthy, so nobody cares about your husband's salary. And just for the record, I know how much he makes. Because, Montana, you have never once asked me what I do for a living. I thought you were a housewife. Nope. Think again. I'm the chief payroll officer of Prescott Chemicals. Oh. All you do is look down on and criticize people. And to top it all off, you have an affair with your children's teacher? Can't you see yourself? Take a step back and look at how you've behaved. It's atrocious. I regret it all. I repent. I'll never do it again. I'll resign from the PTA. I'll never leave the house again. Just please help me. If those photos get sent today, he'll divorce me. I'll lose everything. I think you need to have a good long talk to your husband. Confess. Who knows? Maybe he'll forgive you. All will be revealed in the end. It's better he hears it from you rather than someone he doesn't know well. We are going to tell the principal, though. Stop him, Janet. Don't go to the principal. I'm done with Mr. McCarthy. I'll finish it right now. I'll text him. Don't make this worse than it already is. If people actually liked you, they might consider keeping it a secret. <laughs> but it's too late. Goodbye. I'd say good luck, but I don't care what happens. I'm blocking you in three, two, one. Montana started trying to butter up the mothers of her group by sending presents and overly flattering handwritten letters. But it was all far too late because Prescott Chemicals and all of its subsidiaries were full of Paul's family members. The group soon found out that Isla's husband was just a regular chemical factory worker and not a high-ranking executive after all. And as icing on the cake, her husband found out about her affair with the third grade teacher and filed for divorce. This whole story ended with her being kicked out of the house and losing custody of her children. Her extreme selfishness and prejudice to others came back to bite her. It really is true what they say. What goes around, comes around.